Gotta love the folks here at Ron Hoover. They are actually moving this Elk Ridge so I have access to a fifth wheel that everybody has been asking me to show. So you're definitely not gonna wanna miss this video because you're about to see a fifth wheel on the channel that hasn't been shown yet, relatively new brand, and it's one that they carry here at Ron Hoover. They only have one here at the Corpus Christi location, but I know they have multiple coming in and they have several at their other locations. So hang tight, definitely not gonna wanna miss this one. All right guys, so I am out here, Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we are taking a look at this brand new Alliance that they just got in. Now, if you're not familiar with Alliance, it's a brand new product on the market. They build units that are very much inspired and driven by people who buy fifth wheels. So a lot of the things that you're gonna see about this unit are directly the result of the feedback they get from their customers, which is really cool. But let's take a quick look at the outside of this unit and show you what it's all about. All right, so this is a 370 FB. It has the upgraded Rotoflex pin box, basically a pivot point here with a thick piece of rubber to add some dampening. So you basically isolate the road condition of the truck, towing it from the fifth wheel itself, smoothens out the ride a bit. And something that's really special that Alliance does is they use Asdel in their sidewall construction. So very similar to some other RVs that have transitioned to Asdel. Coachman, like our old Chaparral and the Brookstone, also use Asdel in the sidewall. And what's really nice about it is it's lighter weight than the wood backer. It is impervious to water. It isn't gonna rot or mold or any of that stuff because it's a composite material. That's very cool. And it is great to see that Alliance is using Asdel in the sidewalls of their fifth wheels. Let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,500 pounds, has a cargo capacity of 2,828 pounds. This rides on G-rated tires, 16 inch wheels, and it has twin 7,000 pound axles. I really like how they put the leveling system controls in a little hatch here on the side. A couple other manufacturers do that, but that is definitely good practice. It is not prepped for a generator currently, even though it is an option, but you have two battery boxes right here and your hydraulic system for your level up landing gear. You can see all your wiring in here. Coming around, this does ride on a drop frame. So taking a look at the drop frame, it's a little surprising to me because it's an eight inch drop frame. I would have preferred a 10 inch drop frame, but eight inch isn't really bad. Very similar to what you might see on a Montana or even some of the Jayco products runs Schwintech slides. So that's this little kind of rack and pinion system here on the side of the slide out. It's good for these smaller bedroom slides. Some RVs use them in other applications, but this is a good application here. And here is your wet bay, very nicely laid out. I always like when they put a wall right here to kind of separate your wet bay from the rest of your basement storage, because if you have any type of an issue here, it doesn't affect anything over here, but it is very clean. I like how they put your battery disconnect here as well. So it's actually directly on the wet bay paneling. This is really cool because you can see that this entire storage area is completely smooth underneath. There's nothing that drops down to interfere with whatever you might be loading in or out of this basement storage area. It's gonna be the back of your furnace, back of your water heater, 50 amp connection. Coming around over here, all rack and pinion slides in the back. This is actually a 10 inch I-beam frame, but then they have a box section beneath it to add support as well as add a little bit of height to the actual chassis. Underneath here, you can see how the drop frame section attaches to the main beam. You have all your sewer connections coming off of here. They do hang down a bit low. I'd have to say they're probably about maybe 10 inches off the ground. Not too big of a deal, especially because, you know, the rollover angle of this tire is really going to prevent that from hitting anything. And it sits up higher than the leveling system here. So your leveling system would make contact before the more sensitive plastic components. You have a nice sewer hose storage area right here, which is really nice. It's very thoughtful. 
One thing that they do is they add an extra leaf spring to their suspension. It's supposed to eliminate that eventual sag that some RVs get. And I believe the leaf packs are rated at 4,000 pounds each. So 7,000 pound axle and 8,000 pounds worth of spring capacity. Coming under here runs the Moride Cree 3000 equalizer suspension with the heavy duty half inch thick shackle straps and the greasable wet bolts. This is an interesting tire brand. I'm not really familiar with it. This is called Sterling. It's an all steel G rated tire. Looks virtually identical to a Saloon tire. So it's probably a pretty good tire. Shoot, it might actually be made in the same factory, but it is a G rated all steel tire, which is nice. All LED lighting has a two inch receiver hitch and it appears to be tow rated because there is a connection here, four pin connection for lighting. And it has your towing information here. 3,000 pound maximum trailer capacity, 300 pound maximum tongue weight capacity. Looking up top, it's wired for a backup camera. They just put a hole there, but they don't actually put the Furion mount, which is interesting. Something that's also interesting is they elect to go with your non-frameless windows, basically your standard windows, because they provide more cross ventilation. You can open them up and you get better airflow going all the way through. I don't know if this model is specced with dual pane windows or not. And I know some people are skeptical of about dual pane windows being effective, but they are actually pretty effective. Even though they may not be exactly the same as residential dual pane windows where there's a gas in between, there still is a gas. They do put it in between. The problem with RVs is they move so much when they go down the road that the gas tends to escape out of the seal. But it is still a far better insulator than not having them. Think about it this way. Remember those plastic kind of double layered cups that you could buy and how you can keep ice and other things inside of it without it ever sweating or getting to the outside. It's kind of the same theory with the dual pane windows. Looking underneath, rack and pinion slide. Again, attached to a 10 inch I-beam frame. Coming around. On this side, it has the LCI solid step. What's kind of interesting is kind of the mixture of branded components. Typically when you see the Cree 3000 suspension, you see it with the Moride rubber pin box and the Moride step above step system. But in this case, you have two different brands. You have LCI up front, LCI for the step, and then you have Moride for the suspension system. One thing a lot of people love about this step system with LCI is the fact that the top step is about four inches deeper than it is on the competing product, which is really nice. Gives you a little bit more room whenever you're entering your RV. I like the fact they use the thicker baggage doors. Nice slam latches because you have that drop frame. A lot of storage space. That 101 inch wide body design also helps as well. But definitely a very large pass through storage compartment. Has the three inch thick aluminum bracing up here for your bath deck, which sits above. You have four power outlets here, which is kind of interesting. And you also have a pass through here for your cable satellite connection right here. Something else that's really nice to see is if you notice on the plumbing over here, they put little individual ball valves to be able to shut off lines in the event that you have a water leak so you don't have to kill your entire water system. This is kind of the next best thing to a water manifold system and it gives you independent control of shutting off water to different areas of the RV. Again, in the event you have a leak or a PEX fitting doesn't fit properly or it works its way loose. So that's very nice and very innovative. We have dual 40 pound propane cans, one on each side. It would have been cool to see a shelf, but at the same time, it's not really needed. And the nice thing is you got plenty of room if you need to move the tank in and out. There's your switching valve right here. If you run out of one and you need to switch to the other. You can see some of the cable routing coming through here. So something else that's interesting is they put a propane connection down here. And then behind the door, they put a water spray connection right here. So it's a quick release connection so you can spray your shoes off or if you have a dog and you just took them for a walk or whatever, you can just basically have water access here, which I think is very nice. Friction hinge door so the wind doesn't blow the door around. It's a pretty windy day and it's hardly moving at all. And then you have twin awnings up top. You have an awning right here and you have another awning right here. This awning extends over this, what's probably a wardrobe slide. Again, no frameless windows, so you get great cross ventilation. They don't look quite as nice as frameless windows, but I believe they're actually a bit more functional. All right, let's step inside this 370 FB. 
So stepping inside, it's a really nice interior. You know, I've seen several of these online and I haven't had a chance to really see how I like this color in person, but it's not bad. They've done some contrasting tones, which is really nice here. They give you a nice shelf up here, coat a little hanger here, which is nice, plus a seat. So if you're gonna put your shoes on, that's also a nice space. Has a freestanding dinette. So something that's cool that Alliance does is you don't see any of the heat registers on the floor for the furnace. That's because they mount them here on the side of the island, which is really nice. It gets them out of the way. You don't have to worry about stubbing your toe on them or stepping on them, bending them, or dropping stuff into them. So that again, that's really thoughtful. Also, the really good use of pretty much storage everywhere you look, including a place to put your shoes. It's just very thoughtful where they put different key attributes to make it more convenient for people who are going to be using it. Plus the little areas here so you can pop your end tables in and have little tables on the side of the love seat. Take a look at what they have going on here. 41,000 BTU air conditioning system. So let's talk about the air conditioning system real quick. The air conditioning on this is three separate units. You have a unit here, you have a unit here, and then you have a unit in the master bedroom and they're designed to provide you air where you need it without funneling air through a ducting system in an inefficient way. So whether or not this is truly an improvement kind of remains to be seen. I'd love to hear feedback from Alliance owners on if the three ACs can overpower, you know, 100 degree temperature down in South Texas. Um, and I'd love to know if this is an effective way of cooling. But again, three AC units is really nice. And apparently on a 50 amp connection, you can run all three units. And I believe they do that by running 13 5K units as opposed to running 15K unit in the back and a 13.5 up front. And yes, it says it right there, triple 13.5 BTU units. Now, these are also the new Coleman mock systems. So they are significantly quieter than systems of past. And you really don't need a whisper quiet system with these because they're probably half the sound level as your traditional air conditioning system. What I was talking to you about before are the 4K springs. So I was right there, 4,000 pound rated springs, 7,000 pound axles and 4,400 pound rated tires. So right here you can see the theater seating as well as a sofa in the back that does turn into a bed. I believe these all flip up to give you more storage. See, that's very smart something I don't think any other manufacturer is doing. And that's very smart. It looks really nice and it's very functional. This wallboard on the back is kind of a wallpaper. Nice storage up top. I like this little area in the center as well. And this does have the day night roller blinds, which is also nice. And it has the darker ones, which I also like. You can see it has a good size TV. Looks to be a 50 inch TV. Might be a little smaller or a little bigger, but it looks to be a 50 inch TV storage above. And something that's really cool about their fireplace is the ability for it to pull out. And I think you have to trigger both of these. And you have this really good size storage that allows you to utilize the space behind the fireplace that might otherwise not be used. So that's really nice. So as we move to the kitchen, another thing that's kind of a standout of Alliance is the fact that they give you all this room on each side of your stove for your pan handles or whatever you might need whenever you're cooking, which is really nice. Nice residential microwave above. You have really nice cabinetry all the way around. And this is that nicer higher end insignia stove oven, which I really like. Lots of cabinetry, fully extend drawers. I love the slow closing drawers as well. And on this side, they've actually used a different color tone, which looks really nice. Again, love the slow closing drawers. Island is a really nice size island. I like how they've offset the sink to this side to give you as much countertop space as possible. Coming around this way, you can see there is a Samsung full residential refrigerator. I don't believe that this comes with an ice maker though. Your pantry. Looks to be about 10 inches deep in terms of the shelves. Lots of good space in here. Over here is your half bath. So stepping inside, it's a good amount of space, to be honest. Nice countertop, nice sink basin there. Good ceiling heights, has a nice vent fan above. Overall, this is a nice half bath. Doors also feel pretty solid too. 
right here underneath your controls is a huge storage area. This thing's probably 14 inches deep, maybe about 13 inches wide. All your controls for your slides and everything are here. I do wish that they used the newer panel that had more of the recessed flat buttons on it. This isn't a bad system, but it's definitely a system that is tried and true, which is something Alliance prides itself on. More storage above. Coming up into the front bedroom area. I like how they put a nice seating area here so you can get dressed, sit down, put your shoes on, things like that. They have more storage here, which is kind of cool. They have this hidden storage system underneath here, which is really nice. Plus, lots of drawers. I believe these are all slow closing as well. Your TV's already mounted. The system in here is ducted, so you have a nice ducted air conditioning system for your bedroom and bathroom. You have about maybe a little over a foot of space on each side of the bed to access the bed. You have your thermostat over here. Nice slide heights as well. Don't have to worry about hitting your head. A lot of room over here. So that would be a great place for like a CPAP machine if you need to put one there. Plus you have your power connections here off the side. Coming into the bathroom area has a very nice bathroom. This is very reminiscent of some other units that I've recently filmed, but it is a huge bathroom area. Plenty of room in front of the toilet. Nice sliding pocket door over here. Has a really nice single basin sink. A lot of lighting that comes in from the two windows surrounding it. You have some nice storage here for all your towels and toiletries. Really nice solid surface countertop. Cabinets look really nice. Has a, again, this is pretty much a residential shower stall, so that's very nice. Check this out. So this is your front closet. It is a walk-in closet. It's a full walk-in closet. I mean, I'm not just saying that. You actually can walk into this closet. Space for your washer and dryer right here. Lots of room for shoes and other things up here. You have more space down here, which is really cool. Nice laundry basket. This is just a really cool front closet area. This is unique. I really haven't seen another fifth wheel with a front closet that can really compete against this. This is super cool. Overall though, this is a really nice fifth wheel. And again, not perfect, right? There's always little things and I've identified a few of them as I've walked through that need to still be worked on during PDI because this unit just rolled in. And that's really the same with any brand. These things travel potentially thousands of miles to get where they're going at a dealership and little things can happen. Overall though, I'm really impressed with the overall quality of this unit. I do like the three ACs. It's cooling down really nicely and it is very, very sunny and hot outside. So right now we only have one air conditioning unit running and it's doing a pretty appropriate job of cooling this unit down. I don't have a price on this unit yet, but I would be interested to see specifically what they're asking for it. And if I can get the price before I post the video, I'll post it on this video so you can see it. All right, so overall, my final impression of this Alliance fifth wheel is I don't see anything groundbreakingly different from many other brands. Um, if you look at the way the wires are routed, if you look at the way the plumbing's routed, if you look at the use of the frame, I don't really see anything groundbreaking there. What they've done different and special is utilization of three air conditioning units, which is really nice and not ducting the back ones. So you essentially get that direct fire air, which is cool. I like the fact that they use Asdel on the outside of it, which is also really nice. You don't have to worry about the delamination, at least as much. Um, I like the pass-through storage, it's really nice. The G-rated tires are also really nice. I believe you have an option for disc brakes as well, and that's one thing that I forgot to check. So let me see if this one has them. No, this is drum brakes. Um, it has a you know reasonable suspension system. Again, a pretty common suspension system. The interior is very nicely laid out. I have to give them that. It's definitely a nice interior. I have to say that the front bathroom closet area is definitely unique. That's a very, very nice space and plenty of room there. The furnace is also a very efficient and powerful furnace. So this RV should perform very well, whether you're in the deep south where it's very hot and humid or whether you're up in the north where it gets really cold. And I think that's probably the story behind this unit. Overall, I'm really excited about this brand. I've heard that they back their customer service up very well, and that's probably key behind having a great RV manufacturer is what they do when you have a problem, how they respond to it. I also love how they build a lot of their units based directly off of the feedback of their 
their customers as well as potential customers. So that's awesome. I know they have a mid bunk coming soon. They've already released the floor plan. So whenever they get one here, I'd love to tour it to see what I think about it. Very unique in the fact that it doesn't have a slide for the mid bunk room. So that's gonna be really cool. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.